Hello everybody, what's up? Ismail from cgalter.com. Uh, here we go, another episode of Ask Ismail uh, series. So a question that I got re uh, just today actually from Simon. Hi Simon, how are you doing? Uh, Simon is, a fr is an old friend of CG Alter. Um, so he asked the following question. He said, hey mate, I was wondering if I can request how you do interior lighting. Love the mood you achieve. In particular, this image. Love how you achieve nice neutral lighting without the use of harsh sun. So the question here is how you achieve nice neutral lighting without the use of harsh sun. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about, and walk you through this image, this particular image. Uh, and it's, it's actually the, the dummy project that I use for several tutorials at TG Alter about multipass compositing and stuff. So I'm going to walk you through the scene. So this is the, this, the actual scene, actually. Um, and I can tell you the first secret to a very neutral lighting like this. One source of light. One source of light. A lot of people get caught up on really like when they do, when they hit the render button and they start, you know, looking at those dark scenes, they start adding lights, you know, like this scene looks dark. Let's add more light. Let's add more fills. Let's add more. If you want neutral light, one source of light. That's the rule. Another thing that a lot of people do is that um, they don't understand like an image is combined. It's, it's composed of three things. You know, you have the shadows, you have the midtones and you have the highlights. Okay, so when you have a dark scene, all you need to do is that when you go to post, you raise a little bit the shadows, um, you know, so that the shadows goes thirds the, the midtones a little bit so that you see more light in the scene. So the idea here is that you can control that. Even if the scene is a little bit dark, you can really like with the 32 bit range that you have in, uh, in the EXR, you can really um, um, change the exposure and re really work on the exposure when you go to post-production. Now, of course, you have to render flat. You have to render an EXR. Um, and, and by the way, there's a video tutorial that shows you how to really export the right way. Um, I'm going to link uh, to it in the description. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about the scene, about you know technically about the scene. So I'm going to hide just the geometry. So the one source of light that I used here is is the doom light. I just created a doom light and I used an HD ray. And by the way, Simon, I'm gonna show you um, a good source of HD ray. Like it's the HD ray that I use all the time and it's the one that I liked and I, I really tested over and over again. It just always win. So it's an HD ray V2 by V's people. It's the, their second pack. Um, again, it's going to be linked in the description. Um, I'm not in any affiliation with them. I'm not recommending them because I have an affiliation with them, although I am planning to make an affiliation with them in the future because they're really great. <laughs> so yeah, they're really, really great. And it's 20, 24,000 K. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, they just released actually HD Ray V3, which is um, just, uh, just a week ago, I guess, or three days ago. Um, and this one is really special because it's made by their founder, Andrew. Andrew, I didn't test, but we'll see. <laughs> So um, it's really a good source of HD ray maps. They really they know what they're doing, and they're really high resolution. It's just it's it's good. Right. Um, another source of HD ray is the um, Peter Guthrie skies. Peter Guthrie skies. They're great. They're amazing. They're really amazing. Um, especially the 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 last ones because. He really, he really went a little bit higher because before the, the simples were really, really small compared to now, like it's 40, 40K, uh, 40, 14K, sorry, not 40, 40, would love that. <laughs> um, so high resolution maps from uh, Peter Guthrie as well. And Peter Guthrie did a really great job. Um, um, anyways, I recommend those two. Other than those two, I didn't try them. So um, yeah, and um the one that I used for this scene, for this particular scene here, is, um, you know, this pack right here, SD Ray V2. Um, and the map was the number 10. So one source of light, man, one source of light. And SD Ray on a Doom light. And let me show you the settings for the Doom light. They're very simple. Like just uh, the multiplier to one, which is always a rule. And that's, that's pretty much it. You put the SD Ray here and that's it, man. Put it on invisible so that I don't have it in the background that I can have control afterwards in post production. 
Yeah, let me let me show you the camera actually. The camera settings. Let me get this back. Let me select the camera. Um so the camera settings are really just you know you can leave it actually by default and it will work just fine. Maybe the shutter speed just so that you see a little bit on the frame buffer. But um yeah, those are really like uh normal settings, like default settings, right? Um, and if you know me, I like to do exposure after after the fact of rendering in post production, uh, because I get more control, and this is one of the benefits of thirty two bit ranges. It gives you more freedom to work with in post production. So yes, I mean, like, this is my workflow. It's very simple. Um, just you know, an HDRI, one source of light. I need to use. I don't use um, sources like so. This one, for example, that I have here, this one just an artificial light, but that one was, I called them actually drama lights. They add the story, they add a little bit of character to the scene. Uh, but other than that, you know, that's it. You can use the VR Sunny and Sky system, but it's not going to be as good as the uh, HD array. And um, yeah. So that's actually the technical part of the things. Now, when, you, when you're working on the scene, when you're doing your test renders and stuff, um, there's some things that I really highly recommend. I highly recommend that you work on black and white first. If you're working based on a reference, a photograph, you can really turn that photograph into black and white and study only the light because um, an image is composed of two things. You know, there is the color and there's the luminous. Luminous is the light on that particular uh, image. And, you know, because when you have luminous in color, your brain thinks too much um, has too much information. So when you want to focus only on light, just turn it black and white so that you have only the dark um, areas or, you know, dark areas and, and, and the brightest areas so that you have an understanding of how light is projected in the scene. So the same thing can be applied when you do uh, rendering and test renderings. You can really just, in the frame buffer, turn, turn it to black and white and start doing your test so that you have a match to the reference. Okay, just to recap, so use one source of light. Uh, study luminance by turning the, the image to black and white or when you do your, your test renders, um, work with uh, the black and white. Uh, and then when you finish with lighting, you go to, uh, to texturing and stuff and shading. You can, you can work with, uh, with color. Uh, why? Because you want to focus only on, on, uh, on, a one, on, on light. So when you have color and light, you, you know, uh, your brain thinks too much. Um, yeah, use HDRI from these people. They're amazing. So that's, I used HDRI number 10 from their second pack. So yeah, this is how I went about creating this scene. And um, it's as you can see, the process is very simple. I try to make it as simple as I can and really render flat, something I call rendering flat, like take the XR with the range and stuff. And really when I'm in post-production, I start, you know, working with, um, you know, tweaking and doing the tune mapping and you know so i hope this uh, answer your question simon and um if if it's not clear yet let me know <laughs> so yeah uh i'll talk to you soon you take care <laughs>